Here's one I bet you haven't seen much on because, well, I couldn't find much on it. The Tara TM9X pistol, coming up next on GB Guns. So a few months back I got word these would be coming into the country and I waited and I waited and I waited. And uh, they're from Montenegro, Cernogora. A beautiful, beautiful country. I would show you images, but I'm worried about Google's copyright <laughs> police nail me for putting pictures up. But gorgeous little bitty country in South East Central Europe, if you will. It's technically not quite Eastern Europe, but it is east of the Adriatic, uh, just below Croatia and Bosnia. Uh, they were part of the new Yugoslavia after Yugoslavia collapsed. Just want to show you how nice this case is. A very nice case. It even has the little lockable rings there and an extending nice durable plastic grip. Um, been there a couple times. Uh, the country is so small that it doesn't have its own currency. They use the German mark and when Germany went away with that and joined the Euro, well, they started using the Euro in Montenegro. So with a population less than, well, about equal to Portland, Oregon, I was curious when I saw that uh, they were making something like this. Wanted to get my hands on it. I looked online and I found a few foreign language videos, not much in English until these finally hit the US market and uh, looked a little bit into the history. The videos I saw online showed that uh, Tara Aerospace, the company producing this, though based in a town of only 3,400 uh, inhabitants, is actually um, making NATO parts. They've got 48 or 49 NSNs, which means anyone in NATO can order their stuff. They make uh, ejection seat components, uh, flares, flare launchers, a lot of uh, aircraft level stuff, and uh, this pistol. Looking at the foreign language stuff uh, on this pistol, I've seen no fewer than three variants. The manual mentions two variants. So I was excited to see these come out. I ordered one from Classic Firearms. Um, I've been a customer of theirs for over a decade, and during the three weeks that I waited for them to ship it, I saw the uh, pistol come out somewhere else for $100 less. Uh, I ordered it, taking the chance, because figured there's not going to be a lot of these in the country. And uh, that pistol shipped <laughs> before Classic had done anything. So, uh, and this is a, a consumer warning to stay away from Classic Firearms until they uh, figure out their system. I told Classic to cancel the order. I got immediately a shipping confirmation and then followed by an email saying, sorry, we can't cancel the order, it's shipped. And it's like, well, for three weeks, nothing was happening. Um, I pulled up the tracking information and it was just the information sent to carrier uh, kind of deal telling me that the item was still at Classic Firearms. So I said, no, it's still there, cancel my order. The pistol stayed at Classic Firearms for three more days before it was finally picked up by FedEx. Um, and they said, okay, well, we can refund you, uh, just don't open the package. That's not an option with a firearm. The firearm goes to an FFL. The package is open for the FFL to enter into their books. I, I've loved Classic. Like I said, been a customer of theirs for years. Um, really disappointed with how that all went down. Um, they ended up contacting FedEx and having the package halted uh, just before it was delivered. But anyways, one of the things that's that's not really mentioned out there is these two different trigger me uh, mechanisms. There's also a standard and a compact. Now this being a 15 or sorry, 17 rounder, I'm assuming this is the standard. It looks kind of Glockish as we get into the gun further on. You'll see that it's really not that Glockish. Um, but one of the things that Tara had issues with in the past was their slogan was perfection. So some of the cases for this uh, sold in Europe say Tara Perfection. Understandable that a company like Glock that hasn't really done anything new in 30 years is probably going to go after them legally and that may be why this got cancelled. I don't know for sure. A lot of kind of mystery uh, behind it. But the uh, manual is excellent. Nice clear photos and in English. And it uh, 
shows some features that I think are pretty cool, including the interchangeable back straps, which I like to show folks because I think it's an underappreciated, underrecognized um, way to change the way a gun handles in your hand. But these back straps don't seem to want to come off, and I'll explain more on that later. Case has a nice hard bottom. You saw the Velcro retention in there. Uh, three 18 round mags come with it. Let's get that out of the way and take a look at the gun. So take a look at this thing. You can see um, nice recess there. We'll show clear, of course. Mag kicks out strongly from either side of the ambi mag release. It's not reversible, it's true ambi, and doesn't stick out so much. I don't expect it to have issues bumping my knuckle there. I've never had that problem, but I know some people don't like ambi mag releases for that reason. Starting at the front of the gun, and for all of the uh, YouTube police out there, this is going to be an evaluation of the physical characteristics of a mechanical device. I am not selling this gun, nor am I supporting the sale of this gun. I'm just merely explaining and describing the features and designs of this particular mechanical device. I'm also not filming this with my eyeballs, so when I do this, I'm not pointing it at my face, I'm pointing it at a camera that is 90 degrees down on the gun and in front of me. The only way I'm able to see this is by looking through the viewfinder on the camera, which is at another 90 degrees. So we look at slide to frame fit, and it is tight and solid. We've got some styling there, some front serrations that have decent grip. You notice that kind of curve there, but not here. That's because this takedown is kind of Smith & Wesson-esque. We have a traction point up front, plenty of rail space, a little bit of texturing in the front of the trigger guard for that more European support hand guard in the trigger guard. Pretty good cut under here. The texturing um, is there. You can feel it. It doesn't feel super grippy, but one thing I did notice is very intelligent is we've got horizontal serrations on the front and back, which is where they need to be, the way they need to be, because the gun is going to try to rock in your hand. Um, fairly comfortable grip. I noticed it pointed to me fairly naturally. I can't tell if over years I've just learned all the grip angles and so it happens, because I shoot a lot of different pistols, or if this is um, well a more American-friendly grip angle, I guess to say. Look underneath, we have a little bit of magwell built in, and you can see it flares out a little bit. And a gap here for the grip and strip if you're not competent in a proper clearing of a Type 3 malfunction. To get this back strap out, according to the manual, you're supposed to pull on this, pull a piece out that is locking pin in here, and then this should pivot off. And it would not come out. In fact, in prying at it, I deformed the back of the plastic a little bit, unfortunately. Um, so, sorry about that. We've got a nice high beaver tail uh, with a bit of extension to keep it from biting you. And you can see it gets your hand fairly high up under there. Slide to frame fit in the back. Really tight. Not wanting to move at all. Three dot sights. Alright, we've got the external extractor and no slide lock or release on this side. But uh, it feels fairly comfortable in the hand. I, of course, appreciate full-size guns like this because I can get my whole hand on it. Next, we'll field strip this, take a look inside the gun, and you'll see that this is not so much a Glock. Before we get in there, we should cover the trigger. This, I believe, is the Dare trigger, which is a double action trigger. So it is long, starts with immediate resistance, and doesn't break until the end, and you feel it build. Reset. It's right there. Fairly short. So it's sort of like a double action first, single action second kind of feel to it, but uh, you can definitely feel there's still tension on the trigger. See now it's... Oh, there we go. We have second strike capability. You can feel it continues to build. So I appreciate that as a feature, especially if you're going to be running with old ammo or questionable ammo, which can happen. It's not as common anymore, but uh, I've definitely had ammo that went off on the second strike, not on the first. So kind of nice to have that ability in there. It's a heavy pull. Um, when you first handle it, 
it does not feel like a nice trigger by internet gun snob standards. However, as a fighting gun or duty, gu duty gun, especially to be paired with something like the AK, where, where it has kind of a pull-through trigger, if you will, um, versus a defined wall, you know, most standard AK triggers, you just kind of mash through, I can see that. As far as my own ability to do this without dipping the gun, let's watch the muzzle there. That's still quite serviceable for me. You're not seeing... I'm not getting reset there. There we go. I had to manually kick it forward. Hopefully that's not something uh, that's feature of the gun. Just needs some break-in. We'll find out. Alright, so to field strip, take a look inside the gun. Showing clear once again. We're going to lock the slide to the rear. Pushing up on slide stop there. Rotate this level lever down like on Smith & Wesson's and pull the slide off. As you saw there, no need to pull the trigger, which is kind of nice. And look inside here. We've got a lot more metal than you would find in uh, Glock or Glock-based systems. Quite a bit of reinforcement back here, keeping everything steady and strong. It's not a chassis, it's just a lot of steel insert. Now, coming from a small nation not known for much, um, especially to Americans, and uh, a town of only 3,400 people, would I challenge whether or not this was smart or quality? Possibly, except for the fact that it's the same factory that's making ejector seat propulsion and things like that certified and used by NATO. That gives me a little more faith in the company. Looking at our recoil spring, we can see we've got nested springs which should make it a soft shooter, and they are captured. It's a metal guide rod. Pulling the barrel out, give the hood a tap, come forward, back and out, standard browning action. And looking at the slide. Very clean, nicely done. This guy is serial number 1728. Um, I don't know how many were produced or how many are brought into the country, but uh, Tara Perfection website was up uh, about a month ago, it is no longer up. Tara Aerospace's website is still up, but there's no mention of the pistols. So, this is probably a short run and done deal. A little bit of a crown on the barrel. There, that's nice. We'll check for chamber support using our nozzle match, as always. Chamber support is how much of the brass is supported by the chamber. You can see there's no gap underneath there. Which is excellent. This is a fully supported chamber. That's important if you're going to run questionable ammo, reloads, um, aluminum cased ammo, ammo bought during the pandemic and uh, panic buys when quality might be going down or maybe you're dipping into brands that you're not used to before. Uh, what happens in an unsupported chamber uh, which is the standard Glock style, at least of the past, I haven't dealt with any new Glocks, is um, when the case ruptures, if the case is too weak, uh, it gets pushed out the bottom of the uh, casing there. That's where the Glock smile comes from. If you look at brass fired from, say, a Gen 3 Glock, it'll have a little smiley face on the brass. Um, that's where the pressure bulges there. And if that were to go out, give out, it kicks all that pressure down into the grip of the gun, can crack the gun, shoots the mag out the bottom, scares the crap out of you, and might hurt you. So, I'm a fan of fully supported chambers. Especially when it comes to our What's For Dinner test, where we run all kinds of wild loads. So overall, um, construction of this thing looks very nice. It's nicely done, it's a good rich finish. I'm hoping the camera picks that up accurately. Reassembly, popping the barrel back in as normal, and setting the spring in its spot. Put the slide on the rails, pull the rear, that lever kicked up automatically for me. Don't know if that's a feature or just happened to have happen, but do that and another fun functions check and we're back and good to go. So very simple um, operation and maintenance it appears. Comes nicely oiled. I'm really curious about this thing. I got it purely for the sake of collection because I like odd and different stuff. Uh, I also like to see where companies have ventured into trying something different. Um, 
in pistol design where they've taken variants of what's already out there um, or tried to come up with their own thing. The um, TM9X here seems to be kind of a conglomeration of what's already out there and known to work. But uh, like I said, I've been to Montenegro a few times, Tsurnagora, um, beautiful country. I enjoyed my time there. I thought this was an exciting opportunity to support such a small country um, and uh, see what's coming out of their neck of the woods. I asked some of my Montenegrin contacts if they knew anything about these things and uh, they hadn't tried them but had faith that they would be a quality gun. So I'm hoping that's true. We'll find out when we get to the range. Um, so we won't be able to change these back straps out unfortunately, but you will get shooting impressions from myself and Miss Tia to uh, find out how it works in different hand sizes and people with two different tastes and backgrounds, if you will, in shooting pistols. We're on our What's For Dinner test, probably do our spinner challenge, that's been pretty fun and seems to be a fan favorite. And then some accuracy testing using that very same Nozzler match, see what this nice long barrel and full size grip does with the challenge of this trigger. I'd say it's a good fighting trigger, it's going to be a tough target trigger, but uh, we'll see how that goes. And anyways, just wanted to share this with you. It, uh, it's going to not sent for review. By the time you watch this, chances are these things aren't going to be available new anymore. They'll already be on the uh, gun broker flips or those who bought it and decided they didn't want it because they couldn't find a holster, etc. Uh, I'm not going to try for holster fits on these. This is purely a collection piece for me, but I thought it was an interesting piece of uh, gun industry history, if you will. And who knows, maybe the Taras will come back. Maybe we'll later see an import of the other trigger system, which promises to be shorter and lighter or quicker, according to the manual in here. But uh, interesting thing. Let me know what uh, do you guys ever buy stuff like this? Just for collector's sake and the, the fun fact or fun part of having something different or do you stick mostly to mainstream? I realize I'm a bit of an uber enthusiast if you will. I have quite a few pistols uh, but I enjoy them. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.